to our spiritual lecture series this afternoon. And it is a great privilege and a great joy to be here on stage with such incredible women who are really examples of Shakti, of the Divine Feminine. And today we'll get to hear from them. So just a brief introduction. We are beginning this panel with Laura Plum, who will be moderating the panel. She is offering Ganga Yoga and deep yoga and so many forms of yoga throughout the week. And it is always a privilege to welcome her year after year to the International Yoga Festival. We have with us on this panel, Gurmukh Ji. Gurmukh is a incredible, incredible Shakti whose energy really, really fuels much of the International Yoga Festival year after year and is one of the highlights of the festival. So we are so, so lucky and privileged to have you here with us. So a big round of applause for each of our presenters as I introduce them briefly. And then we have with us Sean Korn, who is getting her second bit of coffee this morning. Um, but she has been offering, she's a, a new addition to the International Yoga Festival, but I feel like has been with us in soul and spirit with the work that she does with activism and bringing a lot of yoga in action and yoga off the mat. So it'll be wonderful to hear from her. And then our beloved and respected Sadhvi Bhagwati Saraswati Ji, who is the director of the International Yoga Festival and the Shakti and the vision and the leadership through which the yoga festival truly manifests and unfolds and blossoms year after year. So thank you, Sadhvi Ji. And our power-packed, divine, hugely awaited, highly anticipated, Dr. Vandana Shivaji, the one and only. I don't think she requires an introduction as such, and I think when you hear from her, that will be her introduction, so I will leave it at that. She is a blessing and such a beautiful Shakti to have with us on this panel today, and thank you so much for being here. Our elders we have here with us, our elders were with us in the Kumbha Mela as part of the Kiva. I have two names here. I believe I'm missing one. But Abuela Tonal Mittal, Abuela Tonal Mittal, and Martina Mamani, and Cheryl. Cheryl, who was an addition to this panel, uh, but a beautiful one in that. And without further ado, the panel is handed over to Laura. Thank you, Nandini. Thank you, too, to all the Sevaks. It's a great reminder of how fortunate we are to have such dedicated people making this happen. So good morning, panel, and good morning, audience. The way we thought we would do this is to ask a few questions and then let it flow, and also open it up to audience questions towards the end. So my first question is really simple. The name of this panel is Shakti. Power of the Divine Feminine in a Yogic Life. My question is, what does that mean to you? And I'd like to start with Sean. Okay, the question is, the Shakti? The, the power of the Divine Feminine in a Yogic Life. Uh, there's so many different directions I can go with this question. First of all, I want to thank all of you for coming out today and appreciate myself the opportunity to be able to be on a panel of women leaders in this capacity. Um, my experience of being a woman leader within this realm has been challenging because there is a paradigm that is set up within the spiritual communities that can often be slightly patriarchal and to be a leader requires a certain amount of dynamism and focus and commitment and activation that is usually assigned to the masculine. And 
to have to maintain your practice, your commitment to your inner life, to stay open and vulnerable and present, self-realized, um, willing to be fully in your humanity is what, to me, living in the divine feminine is all about. It invites transformation, it invites change, it invites um, impulse. It allows space for that inquiry. And so my own personal process has been to do the work, stay committed to God and my practice above all, stay open to the inevitability of change, love big, be of service to myself, to God, to this planet, and to each other, and to find the harmony between the feminine and the masculine within myself, and to take risks um, so that all the work that I've done on the mat actually makes sense, and it cannot make sense unless we are in service. And so that's what Shakti is to me, is being fully yourself, being fully realized in that self, and um, being a woman in this community uh, means allowing space for that vulnerability to lead the decision making and to trust uh, the emotions to be the essence of the self that leads us home and to each other in love. So there you go. Mm -hmm. Is there anyone who would like to add to that? Okay. So one of the things we'd like to do too is to get real. <laughs> I think women, when they sit in circle, that's one of the beauties of having sisters and friends, is that we get really real. And so we want to bring these beautiful ideas into our daily life and hear what are your stories. How has this been a challenge for you? Um, when I hear Sean say that there's a challenge of the leadership and the qualities of leadership that we ascribe to the masculine, is that a challenge internally or is it a challenge externally? And is there any example you can give us of ways in which you've been challenged, even if it's a challenge to be vulnerable as a leader? Is that for me? Sure, and then we'll go on. Okay. Um. The challenges have been both external and internal. I mean, the depths of this question is really quite intense. All I can do is think back into the reason that I've been able to be afforded the privilege of the leadership that I have doesn't have much to do with my skills as a yogi and as a philosopher. It does now, perhaps. But I was afforded opportunities at a very young age when I first got into the community of yoga because of the corporization and the capitalization of yoga and because I looked a certain way. Because I could be used to sell products. Because I was ethnically neutral, because I fit into a paradigm that was sellable, a white skinny woman. And I say this very frankly because I was very well aware that because of these unearned privileges, that I would be provided opportunities that most wouldn't. And thrust into being visible in a way that other women and other men wouldn't, perhaps because of their color or the size or shape of their body. It wasn't lost on me that by participating in this particular paradigm, I was also supporting the very paradigm that I suggest I want changed, supporting a certain look or a body image or a standardized uh, sense of beauty that wasn't realistic. So my challenges were internal. How can I do this? How can I support this? How can I benefit from this when it means continually separating and creating more harm for women in the world? Within that, the opportunity was to use the platform in a way that can create social change, that can be used to raise awareness, to confront some of these paradigms and work from the inside out to change it. So being a woman leader, in some ways, it came very easy. And I was confronted again and again by my own hypocrisy and forced to have to move towards that to create social change. And one of the ways in which I did it to establish my own leadership was the first time that I was ever photographed for something um, related to yoga. When I got the photograph back, I thought, oh my God, I look remarkable. 
And the reason was is because it wasn't my neck and it wasn't my breasts and it wasn't my thighs and it wasn't my butt. I had been so airbrushed that I was not recognizable even to myself. And I thought, oh, so this is how it's done to disempower women. This is how it's done to continually divide us and make us feel that we're never enough. I'm in this photograph and I can't even identify myself. And so I made a commitment from that point forward that if any organization ever wanted to work with me, any um, company, I could never be airbrushed. That you could never take away any part of my body that I had to be able to age as I am publicly without any transformation. And it was my commitment. And that was one of the ways that I was able to use the ways in which the external challenges forced me to have to take action and make a difference within the community to establish for myself, well, that this is my situation, this is my karma in this, what am I gonna do with it? And to me, that's what leadership is all, uh, is all about. So those are some of the challenges, there have been many, but the challenges are more in me is, how do you take these opportunities and actually empower not just myself, but others? So on that note, perhaps for Gomorko or Sadvi, how can we empower students? How can the people here today be empowered to live more of the Shakti, the power of the divine feminine, male or female, in their lives on and off the mat? For me, that energy of the divine feminine is an energy of expansion and connection. And so when we talk about embodying that energy, it's about how can we, whether we're here in a woman's body or a man's body, and I'll, I'll come back to that aspect of challenge, of the, the uniquely feminine challenge of being in this body, in that world, but when we're talking of that energy and how both the men and the women can embody that, the energy is there for both. But it's an energy of expansion. It's an energy that literally expands the female body in order to give birth, but not just physical birth. When so many of us live in this sense of I have to be like this or like that, and whether it's a physical I have to be, or it's an emotional I have to be, or it's a power I have to be, by any sense of how I am supposed to be, that's an energy of contraction. And in order to really connect with the energy of the divine feminine, it's an energy that says, well, okay, here's what I used to be like until I got pregnant. And then I expanded. And instead of just being pregnant with a physical child, when we talk about being pregnant with creation, pregnant with that sacred energy, it's going to be an energy of expansion. May not be an expansion of the waistline, may not be an expansion of the hips, but an expansion of who we are and how we identify. And so as long as we're moving through the world with should be, should have, must be like this, not enough if I'm like that, have to become this, must learn that, we're contracted. And when we bring in that energy of Shakti, you know, in the Indian tradition, when we talk about the divine feminine and the embodiment of the divine feminine, you have many different manifestations of the goddess energy. And one of those manifestations is the energy that comes through and clears away all of that which is blocking us from expanding blocking us from living as the connected, expansive, divine beings we are. That energy of Ma Durga or Ma Kali that comes through, and we'll talk more about this tomorrow on Shivaratri, but actually that comes into a contracted self, comes into a self that says, I should be 
thinner, plumper, taller, shorter, fairer, darker, funnier, more popular, more this, more that, less this, less that, that comes in and just wipes it all out. But wipes it out in a way like Ganga. That's not about smallness, but it's about expansion. When Mother Ganga came onto earth from heaven, I won't go into the story here, but as she came down, the, the beautiful aspect of that story is that she came down way too rambunctious and literally wiped away all of the sages and the saints and the rishis who were sitting along her banks, performing their yagnas, performing their pujas. And she came down as this just intractable energy of divinity, washing everything away. So when that energy comes, it's not an energy that colors within the lines. It's an energy that requires us to expand the lines, not in a spirit of rebellion, not in a spirit of being against something, not in anger, but in love. In the same way that a physical mother's body expands, whether she's giving birth to one, giving birth to two, giving birth to three, whatever it is that's growing in her womb, her physical body expands. And as we're connecting with that energy, and this brings me to that that aspect of personally in terms of the challenges, for me the challenge is here in the, in the spiritual world have been, yeah, of course, there's an external patriarchy. We know that exists. It exists in business, it exists in spirituality, exists wherever you want to look. But the real challenge is not so much from the external patriarchy as how the internal sense of contraction plays into that. The internal sense that says, oh yeah, you're right, I'm not enough. Oh yeah, you're right, okay, I'll just sit in my little corner over here. Contraction, I can do that. That's the challenge. The challenge for, for Ganga was not that which was on the riverbank. That wasn't a challenge at all. The energy flowed through it. Okay, in my way, no problem. The challenge is where the internal sense says, ah, yes, you're right. Ah, so sorry, I forgot for a moment. I'm not pretty enough, not young enough, not flexible enough, not funny enough, not rich enough. And how we, in ourselves, can allow that internal expansion. Equal does not mean same. And here in India, as I'm watching this, this movement of feminism, which is fantastic and exciting and exhilarating, it re-reminds us something that in the West we've been seeing for a long time, which is equal isn't same. And as we are embracing and expanding into that, that femininity, it's not about how can I be more masculine so I can fit in the man's world. It's not how can I be like that. It's how can I be connected to that divine energy within myself that energy of creation within myself, that energy of Mother Earth, of Mother Nature within myself, and be powerful in the world. Whether it's a power in the way that we associate power, or whether it's just the internal power to give birth to that which my dharma, my duty, is here to birth. Lastly, I think in this world, and certainly something that I'm, I'm seeing so much of when we talk about the Dharma and what we're birthing, is this, this tragic illusion that I'm seeing more so in the West, but now 
it's coming up in India, that to be fully female, to be a full embodiment of that shakti, to live your dharma, is somehow to do everything. That in this concept of you can do everything, we have misheard it as you should do everything. You must do everything. And it's just another way of trapping ourselves because the truth is we can embody shakti 24 hours a day. But 24 hours a day is still all we have. And we have to sleep and we have to eat and we have to bathe and presumably we have to do yoga and meditate. And we cannot simultaneously be full-time empowered CEOs and presidents and full-time stay-at-home mothers and full-time gardeners and full-time wives and full-time social workers and full-time heads of NGOs. We each choose. But that sense that somehow my dharma is only going to be fulfilled when I am doing it all and doing it all perfectly, and that somehow the lack of doing it all perfectly means that I'm not fully female or not fully enough. And so if we can allow ourselves to expand into the place of, yes, I am this, and yes, I am that, and yes, I am this, and yes, I have 24 hours in a day. And yes, I have a physical body that needs to be tended to. And yes, I need to sleep. And yes, this is as good a choice as that. And yes, in this moment, in this being, in this breath, in whatever I have chosen for this moment, I am full. I am whole. I am enough. I am that energy of creation. And if we can allow ourselves to experience that, then for me, I have found that it, it creates and continues an energy of expansion, of connection, rather than the contraction in the self that comes from feeling that I need to be doing more, being more. Thank you. I think we'll come back and maybe hear a personal example of how you expand. Because I've experienced that a lot of women feel perhaps afraid or overwhelmed. You know, every woman has Shakti and Kali and Durga inside of her. And maybe there's, I don't know if it's conditioning or what, but that moment where you might be afraid that you're going to destroy everything if you really let yourself open and expand fully. So we can... This is part of the trap. This is the trap that says you are too much. And look how, how tragically we've brought that even into our spiritual practices as we're trying to break free from that. How even as we are embodying Shakti, there's a voice that says, ah, but not too much. Flow like Ganga, but not the rambunctious Ganga. Embody the female, embody that energy, but make sure that it fits into the framework that the world wants, that airbrushed, photoshopped framework. And so, yeah, it's there for all of us. But what I have found personally is that that fear is the greatest obstacle. And as we are on our paths, as we are embodying it, to realize I have an infinite capacity for expansion. Like a physical mother has an infinite capacity. I mean, you think these tiny young women giving birth to triplets. Well, how did that happen? I mean, how did, how did God create 
a, a 90 pound body to be able to give birth to triplets. But look, the creator did it. An infinite power of expansion to give birth. And the same is true of our infinite power within the self. The only thing that holds it is the mind that says it is too much. Tommy is here as I look at him and we've spoken so much about the work of addiction and whether it's drugs, alcohol, food, whatever, but particularly food with women, the sense that somehow if I'm not restricting dieting, I'm going to literally eat the world, I will consume the world. If I don't keep my emotions in check, I will devour the world, whether with my tears, whether with my anger, whether with my desires, whether with my love. We're always saying to ourselves, be smaller, be less. And that's something that as women and men, this isn't something that any of us can overcome alone. As women together and as men in this world, we need to create a new normal of there is no such thing as too much love. There is no such thing as too much openness. There is no such thing as too much of you. And in the same way that we learn very specifically dealing with the food that we take in our bodies, when we actually trust, when we really drop in to that internal knowing, we take in exactly what and exactly how much the physical body needs. And in the same way, when we drop in to the truth of who we are, what we find is, yeah, we love a lot. Yeah, we feel a lot on every aspect of the spectrum. But it's all right. And as women and as men, we need to continually support each other and ourselves. And never, with our words or with our energy, make anyone, a woman or a man, feel that's too much. I can't, I can't handle your emotions. I can't handle your love. I can't handle your feelings. And that's something that collectively, I think, we are absolutely called upon to do. And Gormok, I think you might have something to add? A perspective? Next question. All right, so I just also wanted to say to the audience that we are absolutely including everyone you see up here. We have, at the end of this, we're going to finish with a ritual led by Abuela and Martina. So everyone will be included. And I'm looking forward to asking Dr. Shiva a question, but I wanted to go to Gurmukh next. Um, Gurmukh, yesterday we were talking about how much our relationships matter, that in a way we need our home life, our personal life to be solid in order for us to be really strong in the world. And I just would add a second piece to that that I, I, kept, I heard you say often was, what's the technology? What are the tools? I love how you keep coming back to the tools. Thank you, Xi. And thanks so much that we all could gather here. Because I had a teacher for 50 years, and he still is my teacher even though he's left his body, he taught us so much, but one thing that I'd like you to just close your eyes for just a second, because he taught us one thing, or many things, but this one, he said, I am not a man, I'm not a woman, I'm not myself, I'm not a person, I'm a teacher. And before we start any of our Kundalini Yoga classes, we always say that silently to ourselves. But however, as a woman, you're the first teacher on this earth. 
And for you to say that takes you out of not being a Shakti or a feminine, but it makes you be a one with all. He would often say that we as women must come to be able to walk into a room and change the energy. If it's all of you, if it's a thousand, five thousand, or three, from what? From our presence. And how do you make that presence? You meditate. You rise before the sun comes up. You bow your head. You do whatever practice that you reincarnated to do. And each one of you has a practice. His Holiness the Dalai Lama is asked, what's your religion? Now you would think he would say Buddhism. What did he say? He said kindness. Kindness wins. Being kind is probably the greatest gift we have as women. Does that mean we don't have courage? No, kindness gives us courage. Energy, good health, vibrancy, community, kindness. To rise in the ambrosial hours, to do whatever meditations and yoga, whatever your practice is, is it going to mass, if it's going to to the temple, it doesn't matter. And like Sean has so beautifully off the mat and into the world, I always get the image when sadhana is over for me, I roll up my mat, and there wasn't mats 50 years ago. <laughs> you roll up your rubber mat, you put it in a corner, and you say, how can I serve today? And when you do that, you'll be covered. You'll be healed. All of your separations and your body image, and I'm not this and I'm not that. If you go out and serve in whatever capacity, again, Creator gave you, you're just the vehicle. You don't have to even think it up. Just bow and say, what, what is it you want me to do? Swamiji always says, your employer is God. We're the employees. And if you ask the questions like you would in the world, your employer would tell you what to do. As a woman, we're 16 times more intuitive than a man. Nothing wrong with you guys, but we know. We know we're more connected because we bring you into the womb. You see? But we're not any better. And we have big duties to meditate enough so this third eye point starts vibrating and you know who you are and you know how to serve. And it is all written down for you already. It was written before you were born. And so it's so beautiful. As you get older, it just gets clearer or not. If you don't meditate or have a daily practice, it could get blurry. But I do know from what Swamiji always says, and I use it a lot all over the world, living is giving, and giving is living. It feels like each person who talks, we get so much fuller. Thank you. So my question is, why does this matter? How does this impact the world? Um, about a decade ago when I first heard Dr. Vandana Shiva talk, I realized, I felt like I was hearing the words of my heart, like my desire for my life and for the world. And so I've taken every opportunity I can to sit at her feet. And last year I interviewed her, and after a three-day workshop, she was talking about what's right and what's not so right about the world. And I said, well, what can we do? What can a small person like me do? And she said, your own two hands have all the love in your hands. And she impressed upon me, you know, what Mother Teresa said, think global, act local, that each of us has the power 
to do that small thing, to make our own meals, to maybe grow some of our own food, to reach out and touch individuals and make a difference. So I would like to ask you, what is this cultivating Shakti in our own life, Dr. Shiva, what is cultivating the Shakti in our own life as yogis? What kind of a difference could that make to the world, if at all? Well, the, the word yoga means adjoining, and part of it is a awakening of the consciousness, because the consciousness is one. It's not divided. But it's also a joining to transcend the artificial separations that have been created. Uh, artificial, artificial separations between humans and nature, which is anthropocentrism, which is the license to destroy the earth. And it took women, it took my sisters up in these mountains in the 70s to say the forests were the mothers of the rivers. And that's the same story as the descent of the Ganga. Because at that time, the forests were merely timber mines. And the duty of the state was to extract as much timber. And the women were defined as criminals for interfering in revenue collection, I remember. And they came out with lanterns. There's a small river that joins the Ganga. It's called... Um, um, Himal. And up on the mountain is a village called Adwani. And I remember this action where the women came out with lanterns. And of course they were told there was police. The entire official drum was there and they said, uh, can't you see the sun is out? You don't need lanterns. And they said the lantern isn't for the sun. It's for you. You think these are timber mines? but they are the very basis of our life. These forests do not give us timber, raisin, and revenue. They give us soil, water, and pure air. It took a flood of 78 for the government to say, yeah, they are right, let's ban the logging. In 81, we got a logging ban. It took climate change for the world to wake up to the fact that forests and plants are amazing recycling systems of carbon dioxide that we exhale. And in a way, one part of prana, of yoga is pranayam. And I have a very dear friend who's a yoga teacher and has been for 50 years. She was trained in Chennai, lives in Pune. And she said, I am realizing that pranayam is the most important. Prana is the breath of life, but it's not the breath of life in a, only a physical way. It's also the breath of life in a very spiritual way. And literally is our connection. The day that is extinguished, our separation begins. And we are because we are part of the earth. We are part of the universe. And the universe is pervasive with the cosmic energy, which in Indian cosmology has been defined as Shakti, the power to act, the power to create. The ideas of separation that grew with colonialism first and then were put on a fast forward with fossil fuels and industrialization created multiple separations. The idea of a dead earth and humans who are the ones who create, when they kill the earth. Because if you, I mean, my life really has been spent on trying to figure out this insanity. You cut a forest, you're creating growth. You grow a forest, you're not contributing. You sell a gun and kill a person, you're contributing to growth doubly, both in the selling of the gun, the killing of the person, and you give birth, no growth. You build a dam. I was told you all went up to Tehri Dam. We spent a lifetime resisting that dam. 
So there was Swami uh, Chidananda of the Shivananda Ashram here who came to also join that protest. We know it's on a seismic fault. We know if there's an earthquake. And there was an earthquake in 91 in another dam called Maneri Bali, which caused floods way down. The flooding from this dam, I mean, some of you might be from Brazil, look at that sludge dam bursting and the damage it has done. This dam will flood all the way to Calcutta. And the studies are all done. But when we build a dam, we contribute to growth. When we nourish the river, no growth. So we've created an economic model that says death of, the, of nature and death of women's work is growth. And we measure it with the new sacred called the GDP. 50-year-old number, we've given it the power of God that legitimizes any destruction. But the same structure of taking that which is connected and tearing it apart also creates hierarchies. It isn't just tear apart and separate, it flips. And this flipping does two violences. The first violence is the separation itself. Separating that which is connected is violence. Separating us from our homes in nature is violence. We're dealing with a Supreme Court case which has just ad hoc made a decision. All tribals who are off the forest should leave the forest. When I was part of drafting a Forest Rights Act in this country that said the tribals are the first inhabitants and they are the protectors of the forest and their rights were not recognized and now it's time to correct this historic injustice. Instead, you perpetuate a new historic injustice, say, we wipe them out. But the flipping and division in a very artificial way of men and women and the creation of patriarchy with women as the subjugated second sex didn't just ill-define the woman, which is why the too much comes in, but it robbed men of their humanity. To be human now was to be feminine. You know, Bacon, who's called the father of modern science, wrote a book, The Birth of Masculine Time, to create a science of domination, the science of raping nature. He called it the birth of masculine time, as if ecological knowledge, the knowledge of yoga, was effeminate knowledge. That's why Gandhi said a daily prayer, make me more feminine. Make me more feminine in terms of cultivating the care and the sharing, the giving and the loving, that is the potential in each of us. And I think when Sadhvi is talking about enlargement, she's basically talking about the enlargement of potential, not obesity. Enlargement as potential is there in the tiniest seed, my work is saving seeds. That little seed is the potential for life forever. Every tree, every crop is held in the sea. We've given up our capacity to think of potential. In my PhD was on non-separability in quantum theory. Two amazing teachings a hundred years ago we had from science. That the world is not separable, the quantum world is not, the mechanical world is. And the second, that there are no things in the world, there's only potential. Everything's potential waiting to get expressed as things, as individuals, as women, as men, as trees and as rivers. So the expression of the oneness is diversity. The diversity is not a reason for separation. And as we live through a time, no matter which part of the world you're from, no matter which country you come from, we are living in a triple separation an acceleration of separation from nature, 
an acceleration of separation of humans from each other in terms of all kinds of division, the gender division, the racial divisions, the religious divisions, and now increasingly the division of economic inequality between the 1% and the 99%. But we are going through the final separation of us as beings. So, <coughs> Gurmukhji talked about not being men, non, not being women as teachers is because then we live our full consciousness in the divinity, in the divine shakti. And divine shakti is not just for women. Divine shakti is in every tree, every river, every human being, every child, born and unborn. That's the power. So we've got onto this crazy habit of the mind that is incapable of seeing creative power at work in silence. We've got used to seeing violent power at work. And we take that to be the only form of power. Which is why the unstoppable militarization. Also of the mind. But the second thing we've got used to is that the tools of violence, of conquest, we give them an inevitability and naturalness. And they're talking so easily now of three things. That we will be overtaken by artificial intelligence and 99% humanity will be useless. And some people recommend that everyone be given smartphones to stay busy with the addiction of games, to not create trouble. And there are others who think, yeah, let's just get rid of them. Yeah, we don't need so many. And extermination has been a logic of violence. I mean, the First Nations, 90% exterminated at the time of colonialism. 90%. And there's an extermination continuing. We are in the sixth mass extinction right now. We've created instruments to kill people in the concentration camps, and now we use them for insecticides and pesticides. So are we surprised that 80% 80 80 of the insects are gone? Are we surprised that 93% of the crop varieties are gone? Are we surprised that we are being told we have a window of 10 years for a transition to a world? We're also being told that hate is inevitable. That there is an essentialism of humanity as hate, that there was regulation which prevented the hate, and now that there's re-regulation, everyone's bursting out in hate. But hate is cultivated and it's engineered. And we have to cultivate compassion, and we have to cultivate oneness. And in times like the ones we live in, it's our inner shakti, which is the strongest power. In fact, it's the only power that will work. Because every time there's a nuclear power, there's another bigger nuclear power. Every time there are missiles, there are bigger missiles. Fighter jets, bigger fighter jets. Unwillable, unwillable game. But the inner power that we unleash and all it's waiting for is potential. We don't create it, it's there. We remove the obstructions. We remove the obstructions. And when there was this conversation about, oh, and they think it's too much when uh, energy gets relieved, I think it comes from a very deep fear that has been part of the construction of the silos and prisons and boxes into which we've been put as men and women, humans and nature. I've just done an essay on wildness. I'm saying wildness is what we are. As long as we are alive, we are wild. And the wild knows the limits. A tiger eats an antelope, but doesn't keep killing every antelope. Does it? No. It knows when enough is enough. But when we've lost our sense of relationship, 
we also lose our sense of limits. And we lose our capacity of enoughness. So in fact, relationship is where we start to protect the planet. Relationship is the place where we start to reclaim our humanity. And this deep fear that comes from being boxed, which creates the violence. And you know, I mean, in factory farms, there's a phenomena they call cannibalism. When you put animals too close in a prison, they start becoming violent. So a chicken roams and she's fine. You put her in a cage, she starts using her beak to attack others and they de-beak the chicken at birth for factory farms. Piglets go around with their snout and their little pigtails. They bite each other's tails, so they've got to be detailed. We celebrate the horns of our cattle as the connection to the cosmic. In a factory farm, they have to be deformed. So you create that violence, then you create even more violence to limit the violence that that violence has unleashed. And I see terrorism in that context. I see terrorism in that context. That if we stop, if we don't stop the roots of violence, we will never be able to contain the vicious cycles of violence. But at the end of it, I see all of it as coming from this deep fear of anything that is free and alive. We are afraid of grass that grows without our permission, so you've got to round it up, glyphosate it. We are afraid of a river that flows, you've got to rape her and put a dam. We are afraid of the insects, they go around, call them bugs and shoot them dead. Women who express their energy, femicide. People who articulate their freedom, genocide. I think this rule of violence is not intrinsic to a male culture, it's intrinsic to a militarized patriarchy. And that's what we need to stop so that men and women, the insects and the rivers and the forests all unite in the unleashing of a Shakti that is in all of us and connects all of us. deserves that standing ovation because her work has uh, required her to be very, very brave. <laughs> very brave, indeed. So you mentioned the potentiality, it's a wholeness, it's a oneness. It expresses as diversity. At your farm, Navdanya, which is here in the Dune Valley, uh, you show the world that diversity is resilience. You come back to the women in the community and their power, I feel, is in their togetherness. They went together to the forest. At Chipko, they went together and hugged those trees. Um, I worry a little bit, I'm concerned a little bit that in the world we live in today, that is accelerated, that is volatile, that is so much more technology, that we're losing some of that sense of community. And I feel that's a certain Shakti that we might pay attention to. How do we reunite? How do we unite? not just with the forests and the rivers, which we do need to do, with our indigenous people, our First Nations. How do we reunite in this diversified field in a way that lets the Shakti be birthed for all? Um, you know, we've been made to believe that there are two gods in our times. One is technology and one is money. Both are supposed to be tools and they're supposed to be means that we govern through the concept of dharma. Is this the right tool or not? Is this the right use of money or not? Instead, we've made any use of any money and any use of any tool justified in its own existence. In 2008, 
when the money machine started to crumble a bit with the Wall Street collapse. In Europe, all of Southern Europe, 50% youth went unemployed, 50% youth. I go a lot to France and Greece and particularly Italy where Navdanya has programs. And uh, I remember the government of Rome said, Dr. Shiva, we want to do the ecological work, but we've got all these unemployed youth on what do we do, how do we connect the two? And I said, start gardens. And they did. Young men who had lost their jobs in a software firm that migrated to China, they started to garden. And three things happened as a result of it. First, the software people who had been made to believe that the software job was an expert's job and gardening was inferior. By doing the gardening, they realized they had so much more nourishment of their spirit by growing food than sitting and writing software some for someone else. <laughs> the second thing that happened was the mafia was kept at bay because these green spaces, you know, the real estate mafia looks at maps and sees greens and said, ah, oh, concrete. We could have concrete there. We could build something, take it away. And just the gardens created a whole different use. So the government had a new defense. And the third most important point was, this, as a software employee, you went to work for a firm. In a garden, they had to be a community. Men and women equal, young and old equal. The ones with more physical ab ability equal to those with less ability, acting cooperatively. The isolation and tearing apart very inevitably creates competition and conflict. That's why we think living as community is not difficult, is, is difficult. You remove all the separations, being community is what we are. We aren't just community as people, we are community as the earth. That's what my life's dedication is, to reclaim in our minds and our hearts being members of the earth community. And for those of you who are interested in visiting the Navdanya farm, we'll be doing a course on ecofeminism. I'll be there teaching on 10th and 11th. You can either go to the website of navdanya.org, the pages of Earth University, and explore. Or you can write directly to me, vandana.shiva at gmail.com, and I'll pass it on to my colleagues who take care of this. But when you ask, how do you build community? You build community not as an engineering enterprise. You build community as the giving and the living life. And community builds. The beautiful thing that we've learned, we began saving seeds. You know, we've got six times more pollinators on the farm than when we started. We got more birds. Our soil organisms are rich. Our carbon, nitrogen, zinc, magnesium is flourishing. We did not put it there. We created the conditions for it to grow. And community is creating the conditions through your giving. We can't do more than that. That's the power of the divine feminine. But we can do our bit. And our bit is the limitless potential we have in our consciousness and our love and our sharing and the limited bodies we have, but with three systems we haven't used enough. First of all, we haven't used our full intelligence and brain. We only use the analytic. And every psychologist is telling us, you keep going down that left brain route, collapse is the only way. Collapse is inevitable. Because the synthesizing guidance that comes from the whole. But it's not just the intelligence in the left and right brain alone. It's the intelligence in every cell of our body, in our gut. Life is intelligence. We're not using enough of it. And the only way to deal with artificial intelligence is to deal with, is cultivate living intelligence in cooperation with all other life. The second thing we aren't using enough 
is our hearts, and we are not using our hands enough, which is what I told you. These, you know, what women have specialized in is the use of hands, both in the gardening and the growing of the food and the cooking of the meals and the caressing of the baby. And we were told the hands are a useless limb. At best, you need one finger or the two for texting. <laughs> no, 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 the full hand. Full hand beyond the smartphone. With the earth, with other humans, with everyone who surrounds us, that's community, that's cultivating community. Thank you. I <laughs> I have so many more questions for each one of you. I feel like we could have an hour and a half with each of you. You're so clear and brave and powerful. But I wanted to go a little, I want to divert a little bit here because last night I was talking to Tommy Rosen. We had talked about how some men were asking, can I come to this panel? And we wanted to be sure that men knew that it was, we, we were welcoming them as well. Tommy's response was, well then you should have Saul, David Ray, join you. So I thought Saul nodded that he was okay with me just asking one simple question. And that's simply, what is Shakti to you? What is it in a yogic life? Why does it matter? Three parts to a single question. And I think we have a mic for him somewhere. Yes. So that we can hear from a, a man as to why it matters. So that we can really unite, feel that union. Can you repeat the questions? First one, first one I got. Can you stand so people sure. can? Thank you. Stay. Is there anything in your heart to share with us now? Yes. Yeah, so just to be here in, in this conversation is what we all need to hear. It's the life wisdom the mother wisdom that is in every place on the earth, every indigenous culture, every uh, place has that wisdom. And that's what we've gone away for, from and why we have so much pain of separation. So the first part of the question, Shakti, is she's the, the primordial Shakti, Adi Shakti, is the, that first teacher, always the inner teacher. And I learned from my teachers that we, most important thing in yoga is that we learn to listen to our own breath, to our own experience. And this is being echoed here, you know, so beautifully. This is what we've, we've lost really, is that ability to listen to each other, to the earth, to our own soul, to God. And so I, you know, I think yoga really defines, uh, Vandana Shiva just mentioned dharma. So dharma is really the root, it's with life. And our culture now is adharma because of the distortion. So, so we recognize shakti as that force that is animating everything. And it's, it's in the river, it's in the sky, it's in all of our hearts beating. And just to recognize that as the power of life itself and that we all are that. And yoga celebrates that, right? The yoga is really the celebration of life, of breath, of all of that. What was the second part to the question? Uh, why does it matter? What would the impact on the world be if we could all, as yogis, grow that? If we could grow that. The force of expansion, as was mentioned, that you know, as we, we each learn how to re-listen, how to relink religare, religion, yoga, to that force, that inner wisdom, it expands out naturally to everything, to everyone. And I think that, you know, this is such an important um, maybe point because even as has been mentioned, we, we keep repeating our same psychology into everything we're doing. So even in yoga, we bring our old belief systems and how we're supposed to be but just learning how to trust that force again, because we trusted it in our mother's womb, which is where we come through in the gateway. We are conditioned not to trust it, to be separated violently often. So yoga is that relinking, 
but it naturally includes, I mean, I'm, I feel like I'm just repeating everything that I've heard <laughs> here, right? And, and this is, again, to trust life. And for all of us, maybe it means that next step that we don't know how to take or that challenge that is in our life. How to trust and to move from that trust, not default to our own pattern, yeah? And, you know, one, one thing I just wanted to, to add is that, you know, many years ago I had a, a, a girlfriend who was very feminist girlfriend, and she made me read a beautiful book called um, Shakti Woman. And um, I think I was about maybe 19 or 20, and it really made an impact on me because it, in the book she talked about how f beyond 5,000 years ago, our whole earth was matrilineal and matriarchal, that we were all in that feminine wisdom. And, and somehow, incredibly, there was this shift. It was almost like everyone synced up their iPhones. <laughs> and we went into this more patriarchal part of our journey, because it is, isn't it our, all, our collective journey that we're all on? But I'm feeling that the only way that we can make this shift, as was spoken here today, is by all of us finding that within us again and living from that place. Otherwise, that's the only way. Yeah? Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. And maybe we can keep that conversation going about what it means for men and how we can work together to grow the Shakti and the power of life in our world. That book, the, there's a truth, it's beautiful research that shows that for 5,000 years there was uh, worship of the Divine Mother from India to Western Ireland, from the, everywhere that humans lived. And people lived in egalitarian democratic brotherhoods, everybody respecting one another, and there was peace for 5,000 years. So it's actually quite a beautiful bit of research. I understand that Cheryl speaks perfect English. Cheryl? Can we ask you to weigh in on this idea of the Divine Feminine? and why it matters. It's an honor to be with the distinguished guests here today and it's an honor to sit with the entire group here. One of the things that's very important today that we need to recognize is the spirit that lives within all of us. So I make it very intent. My intent when I meet someone is to look directly at them, to let them know that I recognize them and that I see them because in my world where I live, people won't look at us because of the shameful history over 500 years. People won't reach out to me because they're afraid that I might attempt to hold them responsible or blame them but I love everyone. I know that unity is the answer. And I know that forgiveness is a part of the journey to peace. And before that forgiveness can happen, the truth has to be told. And I'm happy. <laughs> because it's a choice I make every day. I choose happiness, and so can each and every one of you. I choose peace. Every one of you can make that choice. I have come from a place where the history is bloody, horrible. But I choose peace because I know that's the only way. But to get there, you have to learn the truth. 
and you have to go through the trauma and you have to trust that it's going to be okay on the other side and that it's okay to reach out. It's okay to make eye contact. It's okay to offer your services. It's okay to say, I'm sorry, I'm wounded, I've been traumatized, but I love myself so much and I wanna be in service so bad because I know that's the answer, that I will heal. I will choose forgiveness. I will choose the truth. And I will choose peace and happiness. Those are all choices that you can make individually. My people are not the only one who have suffered from colonization. <clears throat> I'm happy to hear that there was a 5,000 year span of peace where everybody recognized each other and everybody supported and loved each other for their diversity. About the end of that time of peace came the time of colonization. My country wasn't the first country to be colonized. It happened in Europe. And six million women were persecuted. And there was a great trauma to both the men whose job it was to protect the sacred, which is all life on this planet. Because men, you carry the seed of life within your bodies. We nurture that seed within our womb. So there can't be a separation between us. <laughs> this wounding of the feminine spirit needs to be healed. The men who descend from that division need to be brought back into the circle. And forgiveness needs to start. And as protectors of the seeds, we need to offer that forgiveness to the men and we need to let them know that the words of my sister, the militarized violence, that that's not the answer. And the men need to step away from the violent acts that the system that we live in today is holding us all down and keeping us separate. So I encourage all the men here to recognize the power that they yield over the re with the responsibility of carrying the seed. Women, I want you to understand that you're sovereign, that your bodies are yours, just like the earth is sovereign and all of her rivers and waters and mountains are also sovereign. Our bodies cannot be touched without our consent. <laughs> the earth's mountains and rivers and landscapes cannot be touched in a destructive way without her consent. The rights to life need to be protected and enforced on every continent, every village, and every community because the planet is alive. <coughs> the rivers are alive. And that's what I want everyone to regard.
We must protect the sacred. That includes everything we see, everything we touch, because it's alive. We're living in a living system. And that's why I'm here. I'm here to protect the sacred because the sacred cannot speak for itself. Yes? Thank you, Cheryl. I just wonder if all of us who are white or European could just stand and say, we're sorry for the wound and sorry for the history and sorry for what we've done to your people and hope that we can have truth and reconciliation and that we can look you in the eyes and let you look back in our eyes and let us know what we can do to heal. Thank you. They're holding, we're holding. Thank you, Cheryl. Thank you. Is, would Martina like to say, speak? Primeramente, yo vengo representando del Perú, de la nación quechua, nación Las Mamacunas. First of all, I come to represent the community from Peru, from the Quechuas. Lo que dicen nuestras hermanas es realmente tanto el hombre y la mujer no hemos encontrado nuestro propio territorio, hemos perdido. A consecuencias de eso es que hemos comenzado a maltratar lo que es la planeta Tierra. What our sisters say is true, is real. The separation between men and women is, has brought consequence and that we don't know which is really our homeland, our territory. En nuestra tradición, para cuidar nuestro propio territorio, que es nuestro cuerpo físico, in our tradition, to take care of our territory, which is our body. Primero tenemos que sentir la vibración de la madre tierra. First we need to feel the vibration of the mother earth. Conectarnos y sentirlo. Y a eso va lo que es la concentración de yoga. To connect with her and to feel her. And that's what you are talking about with the yoga, this connection. Si no sabemos concentrarnos, entonces nunca podremos sentir de nada. If we don't know how to concentrate, then we'll never know how to feel. Y eso es lo que hemos perdido. And that's Por, what we have lost. Porque no, no hemos sabido concentrarnos, ni escuchar, ni sentirlo. Because we have forgotten how to concentrate, how to feel, and how to listen. Escuchar en nuestra tradición es escuchar la voz de los árboles, el viento, en silencio. Because in our tradition, it is very important to listen, to listen to the trees, to listen to the wind, to listen in silence. Escuchar la voz de nuestra madre, de nuestros abuelos. To listen to the voice of our mother, to listen to the voice of our elders. Y así de esa manera comenzar a tejer la memoria. And this way is to start to be knitting, to create this memory again. Y las mujeres comenzamos a tejer primero los telares, procesamos el hilo de la alpaca, de la llama, de la oveja. And that's why we women are knitting and we start weaving and make the wool for the, the weaving. Y ese es el primer paso para nosotros 
de comenzar a caminar en la vida. And this is the first step for us to start walking in life. Si no sabemos tejer, si no sabemos hilar, entonces no estamos preparados para la vida. If we don't know how to weave, if we don't know how to prepare the wool, we're not prepared for life. Y el segundo paso es cuidar el fuego del amor desde de nuestros fogones, desde de nuestra cocina. And the second step or second part is how to take, of the sacred, uh, take care of the sacred fire, the fire of our houses, the fire where we cook. Entonces el fuego de la cocina está prendido todo el tiempo, nunca está apagado. So the fire inside of our house, inside of our kitchen is always uh, lighting up. Luego de esto damos el paso de seleccionar la semilla para cultivar en el campo. After that, we select the seeds that we want to cultivate. Y preparación de la tierra. To prepare the earth. Esos tres, estos pasos, si lo tenemos bien conscientemente, si lo vamos a sentirlo todo. Ahí sí vamos a poder conectarnos con el con el, con el espíritu de la naturaleza, con el espíritu del agua, con el espíritu. Si no sabemos estos pasos, en nuestra tradición no podemos hacer nada. So we need to know these steps to be very conscious um, of them, of these actions. If we don't do them consciously, we can't be connected with the spirit. We can't find that connection. And that's why it's so important in our tradition first to learn to be consciousness of these steps. Y nuestras montañas sagradas nos representan la energía masculina. And in our tradition, the mountains represent the sacred masculine. Y la madre tierra, la Pachamama, representa la madre, la máxima, la diosa. And the mother earth represents the divine feminine, the, the supreme mother. Y mediante nosotros nos conectamos nosotros mediante de la hoja sagrada con la madre tierra. And this is how we connect with her through her plants and through the, the leaves. Pero todo en este tiempo está mal uso de But conexión, de concentración. But everything in these days has been misused and has been disconnected. Porque a, los, a las montañas sagradas, las mujeres no, su, no subimos en nuestra tradición. Because to the sacred mountains in our tradition, the women don't go up there. Pero en, sin embargo, en este tiempo, la mujer sube hasta la punta de la de la montaña sagrada. But today in the modern people or women go even up to the top to the mountains. Entonces, ¿qué se hace en esto? Es que es como subir encima de un hombre, caminas sobre alguien de una persona. This is like you are walking on top of someone. Por eso está alterado la, la conexión. And that's why we've been losing connection. En los nevados, en las montañas nevados, en los glaciares, Ahora la mujer sube, el hombre sube, entonces cada pisada lo calienta y los glaciares se derrumban. So in the high snow peaks where the glaciers are, people, women, men go there and step on it and that's why everything is getting destroyed. Y uno no sabe todavía de qué energía lleva. And we still don't know which energy this is bringing. Si hablamos de la tierra, si nosotros somos tierra, so a veces dejamos crecer muchas plantas que, que nos invada, plantas que no debe crecer en nuestro cuerpo. Si we, if we are earth, if we are part of this nature, then there's plants or things that we don't know that are growing inside of us or with us. Y eso es nuestro enojo, y eso es nuestra rabia. That's, that's our anger, that's our hate that is growing. Entonces nuestra tierra está contaminada, entonces si esa tierra lo llevas a una montaña sagrada que son nevados, que la llamamos nuestros dioses, 
Entonces, pues imagínate cuánto, cuánto contaminación la llevamos. So, then this is pollution. And if we're taking this pollution to these high sacred places, can you imagine how are we going to pollute this, which are our gods, our sacred places? Por eso todavía tenemos que aprender a caminar mucho. That's why we still need to learn how to walk. Porque aún todavía nos falta de verdad lograr el verdadero paso. Ya estamos grande, pero aún todavía estamos en camino para aprender. So we are already grown up, but we still need to learn how to take these steps. Y nos hemos olvidado cuidar nuestro pr propio útero sagrado, que son las lagunas, que son los ríos. And we also have forgotten to take of our womb, which are our uh, lakes, which are our, the, the waters. Hemos dado el mal uso, nuestro útero sagrado. We have forgotten about our sacred womb. No somos responsables. And we're not responsible. Porque tanto hacer el aborto, tanto las relaciones forzadas, abusos, ese mismo también afecta a la madre tierra. No solamente es el plástico, la contaminación. So it's not only the plastic that is the pollution contaminating, it's also the abortions, the relationships, the misuse of our wombs. Y nuestros hombres. Y nuestros hombres han comenzado a captar una energía más dura. Entonces también nos ha maltratado a las mujeres. Y al maltratar a una mujer, no solamente es el maltrato hacia una persona, es el maltrato a la madre tierra. So when we lose the connection and the men start misusing the women, this is not just misusing a woman, it's misusing Mother Earth. Entonces, en casa, tenemos padre y madre. So at home, we have mother and father. Y andamos peleados, siempre. And, and we're fighting, always. Siempre le hemos juzgado a nuestro padre, no lo aceptamos así como es. A nuestra madre no lo aceptamos así como es. We're always judging and we're not accepting our father as he is or our mother as, as she is. Pero mientras que decimos, sí, ya estamos bien encaminados. But still we say, yes, we're on good way. No estamos, estamos equivocados porque estás aún todavía peleado con tu propia madre quien te trajo a la vida. But we're wrong or because we're still in fight with our proper mother and father. Entonces mi abuela decía, si tú quieres ser maestra de tu maestro. So my grandmother said, if you want to be a teacher of your teacher. No está afuera, está dentro de ti. It's not outside, it's inside of you. Está dentro de nuestra casa. It's inside of our house. Está de nuestro dentro de nuestro templo. It's inside of our own temple. Que es cada cual somos. It's who each one of us is. Entonces comencemos a trabajar desde este punto. So let's start work from that point. Y eso es lo que hacían en, la, en el tiempo de los incas. Las mamacunas estaban tejiendo la memoria, tejiendo, trabajando, conectando. And that's what the women our ancestral women did. They were working, weaving all the time the memory. Entonces tenemos que volver para cuidar nuestra naturaleza, nuestros ríos, nuestras aguas, nuestras lagunas. So we, we have to protect again our mountains, our lakes, our seas, our waters. ¿Y quién lo va a hacer eso? And who will do that? Nos toca la tarea esa, la mujer. And that's the chore the task of us women. El hombre nos va a proteger desde afuera y nosotros vamos a despertar del corazón de la madre tierra. Men will protect us from the outside so we inside can be protecting her, the mother earth. Estoy muy feliz I'm al compartir happy. 
con, la, con las hermanas mayores aquí. To share with my sisters here. Para mí tantos mensajes que me dejó mi abuela. Many messages that my grandmother has left me. Con la profecía de que sí, el águila y el cóndor se encontrarán las dos serpientes y volverán a tejer la memoria. With the prophecy that the condor and the eagle will unite again. Y estaremos aquí. What an incredible gift for the heart, for the mind, for the being, for the collective being to be together here today. As Vandanaji was speaking of the importance of community, as she was speaking so beautifully, as she was talking community, I kept hearing, come unity, come unity, come unity. And that message then that has been echoed so beautifully of come unity, come unity, unity within the self, our hearts, our bodies, our minds, our wombs, our mountains, our rivers, our valleys, our feelings, our shakti, our power. Come unity. The women, the men, the indigenous, the European, the Indian, the older, the younger. All of us come Unity, us, Mother Earth, Mother Nature, the mountains and the rivers outside of us united to the ones within us, the seeds of the men whom we love and with whom we live, the seeds of the flowers, the plants, the vegetables, the trees, the protection of that seed, the protection of the womb that nurtures the seed, the protection of Mother Earth in whom the seeds grow into the trees that give birth to the rivers. Come unity, come yoga, unity, union, is yoga. So here we are in the festival of union, the festival of unity, being reminded, re-reminded, reawakened to come and unite within ourselves, within each other, within our planet. We have with us an extraordinary power of Shakti, our Abuela, who even not being well in the physical body today, being fatigued in the physical body today, has come to give us her strength, her power, to remind us of our strength and our power, to breathe power into us and through us so that we can breathe power into and through the world. And so with the love and the reverence in my heart, I will ask our grandmother, Abuela, to, to breathe that power into this world.
Oh, Meteo, con todo gusto por, por esta unión de hombres y mujeres aquí unidos como activistas. With, with all the pleasure of being united here with you, men and women, in being activists. Seres conscientes. Seres fuertes, seres capaces. We need to be strong and need to be capable. Estamos todos unidos en este momento por este trabajo tan importante. We're all united here together for this work that is so important. Deber correr un río. Deber la limpieza en nuestros corazones. De We're ver el propósito de nuestra esencia. The purpose of our essence to be united here in the heart. El propósito es vivir. The purpose is to live. Pero vivir sanamente, correctamente. To live correctly, to live in, in harmony. Crear nuestras propias éticas. To create our proper um, etnias. Éticas. 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 Ser Ethics. responsables. To be responsible. De la um, medio ambiente en el que vivimos. To the environment that we live in. Ser responsables. To be responsible. De la comunidad de la sociedad en la que vivimos. Of the community and the society we are living in. Dar ejemplo. To be examples. De lo que debemos ser y pensar y actuar. Of what we must be and how to act and how to think. Y movernos siempre mediante el, la emoción del espíritu. And to always move with the spirit, the enthusiasm of the spirit. Si todas las ciencias de las que nos han hablado nuestras maestras, from all the science that our teachers have talked us about, las actuamos if, conscientemente, if we act them consciously, las seguimos poniendo en práctica todos los días desde el momento en que abrimos los ojos por la mañana. If we follow them, consciously doing all those practices from the moment that we wake up and open our eyes. Levantarnos como guerreras a limpiar a la madre tierra. To wake up as warriors to clean Mother Earth. Que los guerreros sean conscientes de este propósito igualmente. That the warriors will also be consciousness of this purpose. Somos dualidad. En todo momento. We are duality in every moment. El padre y madre tierra. The father and mother earth. El padre y madre universo. The father and mother universe. Somos una dualidad constante. We are a constant duality. Y nunca debemos estar divididos. And we should never be separated. Tanto para procrear para sentir el amor to feel the love and to procreate tanto para trabajar to work together para sembrar to seed para alimentarnos to feed us para compartir to share los rezos las prayers, danzas los the dances, movimientos the sagrados los sacred. cantos sagrados This. ¿Me permitirán hacer un canto? Please. <laughs> ya suena el tambor, llegan las danzantes, sembrando las plantas por todas partes. Ya suena el tambor, llegan las danzantes, sembrando las plantas por todas partes. Y la curandera recuerda el poder de la madre tierra que es una mujer. Y la curandera
aprender a recordar el poder de la madre tierra que es una mujer, una mujer fuerte, fuerte y abundante, una niña abuela, la mujer danzante, una mujer fuerte, fuerte y abundante, una niña abuela, la mujer danzante, y la curandera recuerda el poder de la madre tierra que es una mujer, y la curandera recuerda el poder de la madre tierra que es una mujer, cruzando montañas, ríos y lagunas, todo es alegría bajo la luna, cruzando montañas, ríos y lagunas, todo es alegría bajo la luna, y la curandera recuerda el poder, de la madre tierra que es una mujer y la curandera recuerda el poder de la madre tierra que es una mujer una mujer fuerte y mujer abundante niña madre abuela la mujer danzante una mujer fuerte y mujer abundante Niña, madre, abuela, la mujer danzante Y la curandera recuerda el poder De la madre tierra que es una mujer Y la curandera recuerda el poder De la madre tierra que es una mujer Cruzando montañas, ríos y lagunas Todo es alegre Bajo la luna, cruzando montañas, ríos y lagunas, todo es alegría. Bajo la luna, y la curandera recuerda el poder de la madre tierra que es una mujer, y la curandera recuerda el poder. De la madre tierra que es una mujer Resuena el tambor, llegan las danzantes Sembrando las plantas por todas partes Resuena el tambor, llegan las danzantes Sembrando las plantas por todas partes Y la curandera recuerda el poder de la madre tierra que es una mujer y la curandera recuerda el poder de la madre tierra que es una mujer And with that, we would like to give the tree of yoga in this beautiful session, starting off with, I think, I think we should give it to Abuela. Yeah, let's start with Abuela. So everyone together, all of our Shaktis together, coming forward to give the sacred Rudraksha to our beautiful, beloved Abuela. <laughs> and a beautiful sapling. Qué 
el día 6 van a ir al Temazcal con la abuela. That on the 6th, they're going to be in the Temazcal with la abuela. And then a beautiful Rudraksha sapling for Dr. Vandana Shiva. It is such, such a joy to have her with us here. And with, with all of our Shaktis, to give... Sabi, if you can... Well, just join me. Wonderful. Come forward. And I'd request everybody that is here to come forward closer to the stage also. We'll take a group picture with our Shaktis. But y'all can just come here. Everybody can come here. That would be wonderful. And then together to give it to the rest of our elders. As a symbol and a commitment for our work to protect Mother Earth, to protect the planet. And I invite our Shakti Yoga Chayas on the stage, our yoga teachers and yoga presenters, our women yoga teachers and presenters specifically, but also our men yoga teachers are welcome on stage. And for the rest of our IYF participants, if you can come towards the stage and turn around, and maybe in three rows, one standing, one on your knee knees, and one cross-legged, that would be wonderful. Then you can join us in our group picture. And we're going to come together to do the water blessing ceremony, which is our traditional, it's become kind of a traditional ceremony in which we offer the waters of Mother Ganga onto the globe as a symbol, as a pledge and a prayer that may we commit to working together to protect water, to protect Mother Earth. And I would actually also request Sadviji to say a few words on the water blessing ceremony because I feel like you explain it so beautifully. So we're going to conclude this ceremony with our, our sacred water blessing ceremony and our beloved Anandra will actually chant some very, very beautiful mantras to Goddess Saraswati as we do this. But today we've heard so beautifully about Mother Earth, about Mother Earth and Mother Nature and water, water is that which connects us and flows through us. The human body is made of water. Water is that which flows in our rivers, connecting us to the oceans, to the continents. Water is, you can say, the substrate of that unity. Water is the substrate of yoga. So we're going to join together here and we'll offer water from the sacred mother Ganga to the globe as a symbol of the way that we are connected to our mother earth and to all of our sisters and brothers sons and daughters, mothers and fathers with whom we share this sacred planet. And as that divine feminine, whether in the body of women or the body of men, we are called upon to protect and preserve that sacred life, which today is embodied in water. Jay Jay Ma Shri Jay Jay Ma Jay Jay Ma Victory to the Divine Mother, the Glorious Mother Jay Jay Ma Shri Jay Jay Ma Jai Jai Ma Shri Jai 
Everybody this is a come moment. together and join us. This is a moment where we can be in the... Unity is not a spectator yes. sport. Thank you. <laughs> come. Sing with Everyone us. join together. Make sure you're touching someone. Put down Maybe your it's bones. just yourself. But touch, touch someone. Your heart, the person next to you, lots of people next to you. Yeah. But everyone, come and join us. Touch Mother Earth. Touch Mother Earth through the people we are joined with here. But let us be connected through our hands and our hearts. And use your voice to sing with us. After the amazing Abuela shared her voice, how dare we not use ours? also the people in the center here to kind of give the people on the sides a chance now so if you all can 
move to the side and allow the people to the side and to the back here to join us in the center. That would be wonderful. Thank you for giving that space. Everyone to the side and to the back, please come forward. take an opportunity to sing a little song and say the names of each of the people on our panel and give them our gratitude for being embodied women, embodied role models for all of us. So we'll just insert their names. Sing with me. Vandana ma shri mata ki jaya jaya Vandana ma shri mata ki jaya jaya Vandana ma shri mata ki jaya jaya Vandana Thank you Vandana Shiva shri mata ki jaya jaya Sadhvi Sadhvi Ma Shri Mata Ki Jaya Jaya Sadhvi Ji Ma Ki Mata Ki Jaya Jaya Sadhvi Ma Shri Mata Ki Jaya Jaya Sadhvi Ji Ma Shri Mata Ki Jaya Jaya Cheryl 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 Ma Shri Mata Ki Jaya Jaya I don't remember her name Abuela Ma Shri Mata Ki Jaya Jaya 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 Gurmukh Gurmukh Ma Shri Mata Ki Jaya Jaya 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 Marti Nama Shri Mata Ki Jaya Jaya Bharti Nama Shri Mata Ki Jaya Jaya Bharti Nama Shri Mata Ki Jaya Jaya Bharti Nama Shri Mata Ki Jaya Jaya Shan Ma 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 Shri Mata Ki Jaya Jaya And the last one is Laura Shri Mata Ki Jaya Jaya Shri Mata Ki Jaya Jaya Shri Mata Ki Jaya Jaya Shri Mata Ki Jaya Jaya
Jaya Jaya Laura Ma Shri Mata Ki Jaya Jaya Laura Ma Ki Mata Shri Jaya Jaya Laura Ma Shri Mata Ki Jaya Jaya Laura Ma Shri Mata Ki Jaya Jaya Shri Mata Ki Jaya Jaya Tonalmi Ma Shri Mata Ki Jaya Jaya Tomalmi Ma Shri Mata Ki Jaya Jaya Tonalmi Ma Shri Mata Ki Jaya Jaya Jai Jai Ma Shri Jai Jai Ma Jai Ma Jai Ma Jai Ma Jai Ma Jai Ma